If I have that toy, I'll be unstoppable. It's foolproof. You are proof that there are fools. Fools, 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 fools. Keegan, very good job in the film. It's so it's so colorful and fun, and it just like I think adds to the already like great history of like musical Christmas mu- movies mm-hmm. like White Christmas, St. Louis. I mean, even Elf. So I'm just curious, why do you think Christmas and musicals is like such a great pairing? I think it's because we we automatically associate Christmas with some kind of magical element. So you go, you go, well, it's already magic. So why wouldn't people just burst into song? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, it's, they're, they're, they're meant to be together. It's like, there's fruit in there. Why don't we put crust on top? <laughs> Who doesn't want fruit and bread? You know what I mean? It's like, mean... It's, yeah, right? So I, I think that's the thing. It's that magical aspect lends itself to us suspending our disbelief almost immediately when the songs come in. Yeah. yeah, that was the same thing. Because, I mean, this movie, it, it like kicks off and it does not hide. It's like, we are a musical and we oh, are yeah. living in it. We are not uh, unabashed at at all. And so I'm curious, though, for you, because I know like you have a, a long theater, just not on Broadway, but also improv. Um, is there a favorite like movie that you like that's just Christmas? Or is it like a favorite one of those Christmas musicals? Either one. It, it's so there's two movies that that, that okay. are that are my kind of Christmas movies. One is a Christmas story with Peter Billingsley. I love that. It's just a film, just a piece, a small little piece of Christmas cinema. And yeah. and it's because it, it it it's it's also a period piece, but because of the way it was shot, it just feels like it lives in its own world. Even though it's set in the 50s, it's it, it doesn't look it looks old, but it looks the way it's supposed to look. It, it doesn't feel like it was made in the 80s. You, you know what I mean? There's something very special about that film. And the other one, I think I'm getting this right, 1973, 74, there's a movie called Scrooge, which is a Christmas carol. And it stars Albert Finney. And he plays Scrooge. And it's where, if you've ever heard the song, thank you very much, thank you very much, that's the kindest thing that anyone's ever done for me. That's from that musical. Have you ever heard that song? No, I've heard no? of that song, but I did not know about Albert Finney in a musical. And Albert I feel like Finney. I, uh, oh my gosh, I really look, want to watch this now. Yeah, look <laughs> up his filmography. And, and I think it's just called Scrooge, you know, exclamation point. And uh-huh. it's one of these big casts of hundreds, uh, uh, dank kind of like gritty 70s, but it's, it's, the, um, it's, the, it's the Christmas Carol story. And and Albert Finney plays Scrooge. Yeah, yeah. I love that. All right, I'm gonna look that up right away. Um, Bringing it back to Jingle Jangle, your character and your performance in particular, you had to do everything that you would have to do on like a Broadway musical. And then you had to add in like, you're talking to CGI characters and there's like practical. So talk about how you actually filmed this because it seems like this is a, this is a very complicated dance y'all are doing. Yeah, we had a real interesting uh, technology that was available to us where we had a guy who was in mocap in a room next to the room where we were at Video Village. So when I came off stage for reference, I could come over and look at a monitor, Jacqueline, that literally had him, the guy in the other room is moving around and on the monitor, I'm watching Don Juan walk around. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so then I'd go around the corner and I would, and they would, they'd have a little figurine of Don Juan or, a, or sometimes a ball, like a tennis ball. And like, go so right here, King, and then he's going to move. And then I would go like this and look around. Yeah. Okay. So I'm to the, okay. And I'd watch him, the actor. And so wow. we were, it was really, it was amazing. And then later Ricky, Ricky Martin did his mocap in Los Angeles. So it, it was, it, the, 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 the CGI elements were fantastic. And then when Buddy doesn't work, the set, when I get Buddy and he doesn't have, and I don't believe and he doesn't work, um, I had a practical Buddy. So that was practical. And then in the dance number, the whirly twirly is not there. So we're yeah. dancing, we're singing, and we're looking at nothing. And we're, and we're, we're all looking, there's a, just a man standing with a stick and we're all following the stick around. And, and the Academy Award goes to Keegan-Michael Key for <laughs> dancing and giving me all kinds of face with a, a like, a, you know, nothing there. So I appreciate yeah. you, sir. It's even more incredible hearing you say that. And shame on them for not letting you have Ricky Martin, but that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, sir. Nice, take care. Bye-bye, Jacqueline. Jangle, for the last 30 years, you've been promising something sensational. I need more time. 
Either come up with the money you've borrowed by Christmas or show me the revolutionary invention you once promised. How you doing? Hi, how are y'all? Um, first of all, gentlemen, much congratulations on the film. It is just like a transportation into like a beautiful like Black Christmas special that I was like so happy to see. Um, let's start with you, David, um, because I know this was like a labor of love, but why do you think music and Christmas? Why do those like pair together so well and want to keep like revisiting this, this version of story? I think uh, everyone has their favorite songs that you could, you know, you can sing without even thinking about it from the holiday. Or there's a song that just makes you, mine was a Mahalia Jackson Christmas, you know, do you hear what I hear? I remember her singing every single Christmas, my mother would put on the Mahalia Jackson Christmas uh, record. So it's, it's just kind of part of your DNA, the holidays, but not only the love of it, but the loss from it is in our DNA. So it makes you, gives you pause as much joy as it gives you. It also gives you pause to remember, you know, those. So I, I just think it's, I, I think you can't have one without the other. And then to put all these classic new songs in there, this just makes it, takes it over the top. Yeah, and Forrest, he put you to work on this one. You had to do like a little sing, a little dance, and it was like a lot. Fly. And then you had to fly. <laughs> I know. I was to say, and then all of the like CG and practical. So talk about the actual filming, because when I was talking to Keegan, he said it's a big marriage between like literally a whole bunch of different elements. Well, Keegan had to deal with like the doll and stuff, and <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you know what was cool? What was great about it was that even though there were some CG elements, but they built the center square of the town and my shop was built. It was two stories high. And then, you know, so I could go in and touch the toys and see them moving around. I got a chance to go in the back into my little workshop area and like settle there even before weeks before we started to shoot, maybe a month before, I don't remember. Um, and it really like fuels your own imagination as an actor too, to be able to do that. And it just kept growing. The dancers came, the artists came, the music started to play, people started to sing. It was, a, it was an amazing experience, actually. I mean, it really shows. It does look like everybody's having a good time, even though I'm looking at it like that was like six weeks of rehearsal <laughs> and then some to get ready for that. So I'm just curious, like you've done theater before and everybody I think in here has done some form of theater. Is it more difficult, like maybe eight shows a week or is it like this is the last take we have to get it? Like which one is the more stressful element? of the theater live or like, we've got to get this perfect with like all of the moving parts. I mean, it is something about something that's live that uh, especially when, when you're like moving through it and you, you feel like you make a mistake and stuff, you can guide yourself through it, but it's a little different on film. You shoot it and then they shoot it again or it's, even if it's the last take you shot some takes before and it's a little different, you know, um, but, but there's a, give off, you know, because in the theater, you get to feel the audience's presence more sh so strongly. And in the film part, you're like living in, even though it's bigger, insular kind of invent. And there's something special about both, you know? Yeah, and I think this film really like, it does feel like very theater in a way, but then it also has its own little, I think, sort of vibe to it. And David, I wanted to talk to you about this one because the production design and just like the look of the film is really just so incredible. And I'm just curious, are there any particular elements that you were inspired by that you wanted to make sure you added into this? Because it does feel very unique, but it, it just still screams Christmas. Well, you know, it's just like uh, the going into jangles and things for the first time. I mean, if you close your eyes and you think, well, what is the, what is the best version of a, 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 a toy store? Uh, my childhood, well, that's it. And I wanted to create it. And what I found was it wasn't just me that had that. I had, there were at least 500 people working on the set. There were 500 grown adults that became kids every time they walk through that stage and they put the best version of their childhood into the film. So it wasn't just me reliving my childhood or getting in touch with my inner child, it was everybody. And that was the spirit of the set. It was, it was, and it's a spirit of the film. And I think that's why it's something for multi-generations, you know, for the kid, for the adult with the kid in them, for the grandmother, it, it's for everybody. And, and I, I think it's what the world needs at this time. Yeah, it definitely hits on that. But it also, if, even if you're an adult, you think back to like that perfect toy that you were dreaming about because so much of the movie is about creating that toy when a kid gets it that they light up. So I'm just curious if either of you remember your favorite
Christmas present, something from under the tree. And I'll start with you, Forrest, and then go to you, David. I got this red bike, you know, the first bike I ever got. And uh, I remember it really well because that day we got it and my dad and I went outside to, for me to try to learn how to ride a bike. And he was pushing behind me and I was going forward and I was nervous. And I remember the moment where I turned back and he wasn't there, you know? <laughs> and so that was a special, special moment when I was riding the bike for a few more feet. <laughs> and then you crashed out, of course. Yeah, I know. And then real quick, David, if you mind, what was your Mine favorite? was a Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And, 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 you know, they'd be knocking each other's head off. My brother and I would play. And then he hit me, my, my robot, really hard and knocked his head off. But he really knocked it off. He was just supposed to <laughs> knock the head back and then snap it in place. He knocked it off. And I'm like, Mama! He broke yo, my rock and rock and robot. <laughs> mm, that's, a, that's a sad Christmas memory, but a memorable one. Thank you, gentlemen, so very much. And uh, again, congratulations on the film. Thanks, Sid. Blessings to you. Thank you. Bye. What's wrong, Grandpa? I had a perfect life. Loving family and a magical shop. Till an old friend took it all. I just wanted to start, though, by talking about uh, Christmas and musicals, because it seems to be this great sort of like peanut butter and chocolate combination. So I'll start with you, Anika, if you can tell me why you think Christmas and musicals go so well together. Well, Christmas music, and our film is not filled with traditional Christmas music. You know, the score is very Christmassy and it says Christmas, but the uh, soundtrack is not uh, traditionally Christmassy. But Christmas music, I think, is some of the most beautiful music you can find, which is one reason why I love standards so much. Standards remind me of Christmas music. Anytime I hear standards, I'm like, that's like Christmas. Um, it's so melodious. It's, it's like a hug, even when it's raucous. Um, and it reminds me of, I don't, it just reminds me of goodness. It just reminds, it makes me feel comforted. And, um, and that's how you're supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel joyous and comforted and happy. And there's something about the bells. I love it. I love it. So a Christmas musical is perfect. And I love that you said it's chocolate and peanut butter because it really is this year. I mean, <laughs> I was just not going to listen though. Because I love that, you know, when people get ready for a holiday, they put on movies and like, this is going to be the new black preamble to Christmas. Like I could totally see my mom putting this on the day after Thanksgiving when she starts decorating her tree is like, the new turn the page. So I'm just curious, Madeline. I mean, I, I I don't know in your in your tender years if you've had a lot of Christmas movies that have like stuck out to you. But do you have a favorite? Um, my favorite Christmas movie is the live action Grinch, starring Mr. Jim Carrey. Uh, yeah, that has to be my favorite because it's so funny. I love it so much. <laughs> and a great musical too. Let's keep yes. it like yes. Jim, Jim definitely did it up for that one. Um, Felicia, I'm going to bring it to you because you did not have to maybe do all of the, the huge numbers like everybody did on every single thing. Like there's a lot of ton of numbers, but there's also a big marriage between like practical and what's imagined. So I'm just curious when you were filming your sections, how did how did you guys make that marriage together? We just played the scene mm -hmm. and we played the scene for what it meant what it meant to us as characters within the scene. Um, the cinematographer and the director created the space, the look, and the feeling. That, that was their work. And it was as if we had stepped into it and we, we could play the scene. I love it because you do feel like when you start this movie like you really do get transported it is like right off the get it's colorful it lives in its authenticity and it really is like this is an unabashed musical where like toys come alive which I think is really great and I they sent us like a fun box of like jingle jangle knickknacks I'm like this is gonna be like so toy central but it made me start thinking back to my favorite toy when I was a kid, like my best Christmas present that I ever got under the tree. And so I'm wondering, and I'll start with you, Madeline, since you probably remember better. Uh, what was your favorite Christmas under the tree present where you were like, Santa did good? Um, well, 
under the tree. I haven't had like a, a proper, I guess you could say, uh, Christmas tree or like celebration because I've actually been performing for the past three Christmases. But one, my favorite gift and my best gift was my phone. <laughs> That's uh, I. I <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to take that whatever. And you can really quickly, they're wrapping me, but I'm curious if you've got a, a best, you know, under the, under the present tree. Well, it wasn't under the, under the tree, but um, it, it, it's sort of a tie, but I'm going to choose the year that I got my piano. Aww. I came down and it had a huge ribbon, a big red ribbon on it. And it was beautiful and it was unexpected. And uh, it was pretty great. As a piano player, I feel you on that one, sis. My piano is right, <laughs> right behind this camera. It is a joy. Thank you, ladies, so much for chatting with me, and congratulations again on the film. Thank you.